Nigeria is 169th on the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Index. It is a ranking which the federal government says is unacceptable for a country which is aiming to become one of the world's top 20 economies in no distant time. Tonight, I am joined on the program by, a, by the woman who is leading the charge to make, the, make doing business in Nigeria a whole lot easier. She is Dr. Jumoke Uduwali. She is a coordinator of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council. She will be telling me what the council is doing to take Nigeria 20 places up on the Ease of Doing Business Index ladder. I am Shegun Ojumu, and this is Hindsight. Shegun Ojumu. On this program, we'll be bringing you news, views, and exclusive interviews with security that cut across humanitarian aid to it becomes easier to do business in Nigeria. Now, Nigeria. I am now being joined in the studio by Dr. Jumoke Uduwale. She is the uh, coordinator of the Presidential Enabling uh, Business Environment Council. Dr. Jumoke, you're Good. welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much for, for being here today. Now, uh, Nigeria is number 169 on the, on the ladder. Now, uh, how did we get to this point? Hmm. Well, Thank you for having me, first of all. Of course. The sad truth is that as far back as 2006, we were ranked 94th. And then we went into a free fall. The problem is that if you do nothing, you move backwards because other countries are doing stuff. Mm. So because we didn't pay enough attention in a coordinated manner as a government mm. to this issue, we found ourselves in this position. Mm. But I'm pleased to say that for the first time last year, we were able to stem the tide we actually moved up one place, yeah. very small <laughs> increment, <laughs> exactly. but that was the beginning of our reform efforts. Okay. Yes. Uh, now, like you said, last year, the federal government said it is not happy with the situation. Uh, it said, uh, and of course, that's where you come in. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about the council you coordinate that you had. Uh, what is your mandate exactly? Okay. So as far back as 2015, the government started working on how to create a more conducive business environment. And then we did some scoping, we looked at international best practice, mm -hmm. how other countries have tackled this issue. And we decided not to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. So our model is pretty much what you have that has been impactful in countries like Georgia, Rwanda, Botswana. Mm -hmm. um, the president inaugurated a presidential council in July last year, this was after quite a bit of background work. Mm -hmm. It's chaired by His Excellency the Vice President. Okay. Yes, which is how come I'm secretary because I'm on his economic team, the, team, okay. the Vice President. Yes. Okay. So it's chaired by the Vice President. Uh, the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment is the Vice Chair. Mm -hmm. And you have about 10 other ministers, finance, transport, foreign affairs, power, information, mm -hmm. a whole variety, everybody that touches on this issue. Mm. And then you have a representative from the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. You have the Deputy Senate Majority Leader, okay. Senator Nala, he's on the council. You have representatives from Lagos and Kano State. You mm. have a representative of the private sector. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and now uh, give me uh, some insight into your core mandate now. Okay. Basically our marching orders are to make Nigeria a progressively easier business climate. Mm -hmm. So it's not all about rankings, it's actually about the reforms and the impact, particularly focused on MSMEs. Okay. Because we feel that larger corporates have access to power. Mm -hmm. They know a minister, may know the president, may know, but actually the presidency is interested in SMEs having a systemic conducive climate in mm. which to do business, you don't have to know anybody. Mm. Yeah. So the primary mandate is to make things easier for them. And mm. how will we know we've achieved that? By the testimonials of SMEs across the country. Mm. Yeah. The second thing is that our public persona, our ranking, is pretty abysmal, as we've discussed. Mm. Um, it's from basically taking our eye off the ball, mm. but our eye is firmly back on, on the, the ball. ball right yes, now. yes. And we're already making traction. Mm. So we've given ourselves a target for this year 
to move up at least 20 places. And mm -hmm. why 20 places? Because the sub-Saharan average is in the 140s. So at least come to the sub-Saharan average, although we're the biggest economy. Mm -hmm. We're like the big kid in kindergarten. <laughs> we're like the 10-year-old in kindergarten. <laughs> yes. So we need to address that promptly. Mm. Yeah. OK, very well. Uh, you are just about the midway point of your 60-day action plan now. Yeah. All right. Uh, tell me exactly, if you can, uh, what you've, you've achieved during this period. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a bit about the plan, first of all. Of course. Um, so we have this 60-day action plan. We picked some low-hanging fruits. Well, they're not all easy, but they're what we consider to be quick wins okay. that we can implement quickly and effectively. We did some scoping since last year, and we identified about seven indicators. Mm -hmm. We started with three reform areas last year, mm -hmm. and we ex expanded to seven indicators on the World Bank indices that we feel that if we achieve some of these, then we would move up in the ranking. But mm. more importantly, it will be felt. Okay. And the eighth one is, of course, the airports, entry and exit of people. Mm. So I don't know if, if uh, people may want to know the list. You have paying taxes, getting credit, starting a business, of course, entry and exit mm. of people, trading across borders. So for instance, if I take trading across borders, we're almost at the bottom of the barrel. We're like 182 wow. on that indicator. From 190? Yes. Wow. Yes. So you have the, the imports and exports, the documentation, the processes, the pre-inspection um, processes, all sorts of things. Mm. And it takes a lot of time mm. and it's expensive. Mm. And then you have the lack of transparency, the certainty. Mm. So we've been working on those three things. Mm. First of all, last year, we started working with MDAs to make sure that their websites are up to date, the cost, the procedure, the forms required, who is responsible, how long does it take, mm. so that business owners know what they're up against. And this is across the board and several, several, several MDAs. Right. So that's the first thing we started doing. But in this 60 days, we, we really just delimited starting a business, uploading of documents, mm -hmm making sure that from 10 days, we come down to 48 hours. So these are the targets. In trading across borders, we need to reduce the amount of documentation. We have like 10 export forms and 14 import forms, mm. um, trying to reduce to a reasonable number, of like seven and eight, which is about the average of our regional pairs. Okay. Rwanda is at like five and six or six and seven. Mm. So these are the kinds of meaningful changes mm. that Nigerians would feel. Mm. Paying taxes, you have e-filing solutions. And we're taking feedback. Even as we're doing the reforms, we're taking feedback. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, talking about uh, entry and exit, there's mm. this the visa on arrival uh, policy. We have a report on that coming up shortly. But okay. uh, if you can, uh, uh, that's one of those things that you, yes. you, you mentioned yes. earlier. Yes. Okay. So we've been working with the Honorable Minister of Interior mm. and, and indeed the Nigerian Immigration Service very closely since last year. Mm. The visa on arrival process itself has been streamlined. Mm -hmm. You'll notice at the airports, it's a lot more, the signage is better. Mm -hmm. People know the process. And then even from inception, you know you have to be invited by a company. The, the uh, consent needs to be given by yes. the Comptroller General. We've made that process virtual. So mm -hmm. you don't have to go to the office physically. Okay. A lot of little changes that just make things easier. And people have actually been telling us, I mean, we're not there yet. yet. We're not saying we're perfect, <laughs> yeah. but it's getting progressively better, better. which is what we, we have charged ourselves with. Yes. Like every day, something, it may be a small change, but incrementally, the business climate should be more comfortable mm. for Nigerians and our guests. All right. Let's take a look uh, at that uh, report. Okay. Also has some security elements to it. Okay. All right. The need to tackle global terrorism, transborder crimes, and national insecurity has never been more expedient as Nigeria battles a home-growing insurgency and a recurring crisis between farmers and pastoralists. To this end, the Nigerian Immigration Service has unveiled its 2017 immigration policy, which will help keep proper records of the movement of foreigners in and out of the country. The idea is to be able to uh, receive them, document them, 
and then also issue them with the international transhuman certificates. Now you'll be able to know and monitor you know, their movement from that point to where they are going, uh, even when coming back. The policy will also make the tracking of wanted persons and terrorists more proactive by security agencies. We work with the Interpol, for instance. If a uh, non-terrorist is trying to cross our borders, uh, we'll be able to pick him uh, based on the kind of data available with us. Registration of these people will fight terrorism, will fight all forms of crime. Once we know who is where, we know that you are in our country, you are in our territory, we have you, we know your address. It makes things easier. It will help uh, transnational crime to be fought effectively between two countries. Another relevant area the policy aims to tackle is boosting the nation's drive for direct foreign investment. The Comptroller General of the Nigerian Immigration Service says it will help ease the visa application process, thereby improving the ease of doing business for investors. Anybody who is applying for visa on arrival, unlike the previous system where you have to travel all the way from Lagos to bring application to the Office of the Comptroller General, this time we said you can send it to a dedicated email address. We will process it and send back the approval to your email and also send to the airlines before we do final automation. So this is ease of doing business. You don't have to come to uh, our office to do it. We'll make it easier. The 2017 immigration regulation has already been gazetted and its implementation commences immediately. Okay, uh, you just watched that report. Mm -hmm. Visa on arrival is, is key. Mm -hmm. I think Ghana does it, mm -hmm. Rwanda does it. Kenya. Kenya does it. Uh, uh, Dubai, it's the same yeah. in this in these places. Mm -hmm. uh, just how key is this to what you've been tasked with? It's extremely key, and in fact, the honourable minister is a member of the council, mm -hmm. so we've been part of the journey all the while. Mm -hmm. We work very closely with the Comptroller General of Immigration, so I was actually delighted okay. to see that they were both just. We just finished the council meeting. Okay. They were both in attendance and okay. actually spoke with the press afterwards as well. Okay. Um, you know, when we're trying to court foreign investment and we're competing with other economies, some on the continent that you just listed, mm. we need to be warm. We need to be welcoming. Mm. It, we're, you know, we're not doing them a favor. No. They're bringing capital. Yep. And when capital translates into jobs, and we want jobs. So it's in our own self-interest. Interest to receive warmly. Of course, we do all our security checks. So mm. I know that there's a safety element and mm. they're extremely clear on that. Mm. But we welcome very much serious business people to the country. Mm. The NIPC is also doing a fantastic job. That's the Investment Promotion Council okay. of courting domestic and international investors and making it easier for them, cutting to the red tape and giving them access to relevant information so mm. they can do business here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Uh, hold that thought. We're going to take a <laughs> short break now and then we'll return with yeah. uh, Dr. Jumoke. Stay with us. Okay. On this program, we'll be bringing you news, views and exclusive interviews with security that cut across humanitarian aid to so It becomes easier to do business in Nigeria. Now, Switzerland. Okay, uh, we welcome back to the program. We still have uh, Dr. Jumoke Uduwale here with us on the program. We've been talking about uh, her work, which is uh, making it easier to do business in Nigeria. Okay, let's continue with the conversation, shall we? Uh, I've been doing some, some studies, some research on this, of course, and I came up, I, met, I discovered Georgia. Uh, it's, it's a small country, but it's, uh, since 2014 till now, it has achieved a lot in it attracting FDIs, foreign direct investments yeah. from across Europe and from uh, China, you know, acting like as a bridge mm -hmm. between Europe and the East. Now, um, it is number 16 mm -hmm. on the index, mm -hmm. actually doing better than Germany, which came as a surprise. And Germany is the biggest <laughs> economy in the yeah. Eurozone. Yeah. It's doing better than Netherlands. Mm -hmm. The Netherlands stands at, uh, sits at 98, uh, 28, sorry. Mm -hmm. Switzerland at 31. 
but of course New Zealand is number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is Georgia doing differently, you know, that makes it have this kind of ranking? Well, Georgia is extremely deliberate about removing bottlenecks, removing regulations. I mean, we've, we've worked closely with the former Prime Minister of Georgia mm -hmm. and his team that actually, within a nine to ten year period, mm -hmm. took Georgia from as far back as a hundred and, you know, really mm -hmm. high up. Is that Sh All the way, uh, Nika. Okay, <laughs> Nika. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And, and um, what they simply did was to deliberately and strategically de-bottleneck. Just, mm -hmm. if you don't need it, remove it. Why mm -hmm. do you need it? questioning why is it okay so we've always done it and what happens you know they went as radical as removing all the police officers on the road all the traffic wardings wow. and they claim the traffic was better <laughs> <laughs> so so that's georgia okay smaller country definitely you have also african examples you have also of course examples like new zealand mm. singapore you have yes. closer to home rwanda, rwanda. Mm. kenya botswana mm. mauritius mm. Uh, the highest ranking african country what it is, is it takes the political will, mm. it takes coordination, and it, it takes perseverance. They've mm. been at it a long while. Mm. It does take time. Mm. But this is the journey that we've begun. Mm. And I think we have the elements. Mm. We've interacted with quite a few of these teams, asked questions. Mm. We've interacted with the World Bank. Mm. What makes a good reform stick? Because for us, it's not really just about rankings. So you have the ranking, but does it translate mm -hmm. um or you have a reform on paper does it make the lives of nigerian entrepreneurs better, better easier and lasting mm. yeah so okay well still hold on to that thought because i have that video coming up shortly mm -hmm. uh the example of georgia what it, what it has done mm -hmm. and what it, what it is doing to make b doing business in that country a bit easier let's watch that video Georgia is an emerging destination for international property investors, but not exclusively them alone. One of the uh, prominent and most interesting sectors in the property is uh, definitely the hospitality sector, uh, because tourism in Georgia has been rising for the last four years, uh, more than 20% a year. And uh, last year we had uh, around 6 million visitors in the country, so that's a quite a good achievement for the country and uh, that number will grow. Another sector which is very also promising and interesting and there is uh, no enough supply on the market that's uh, definitely office market and especially class A office market. According to World Bank projections, Georgia's economic growth is expected to be an average rate of 5.5% per year over the medium term. This is based on greater policy certainty, improved market access and strong structural reform implementation. Georgia is a part of the West, is an island of the West in the South Caucasus, giving investors liberal uh, economic framework, low taxes, uh, light um, regulatory framework. Those are the extras that Georgian can put on the table that no other country in the neighborhood is able to offer. In the latest World Bank's Doing Business report, Georgia ranked 24th, and Transparency International's Corruption Perceptions Index puts the country ahead of six EU member states. We see Georgia as a post-Soviet country, but the reality is for the, that, that because of successful reforms in the last 15, 20 years, 25 years, Georgia is a transformed country. Georgia wants to be the link between China and Europe, which they hope will be one of the country's growth drivers. At the moment, Georgia is negotiating a free trade agreement with the Asian giant, and they are already part of the free trade area of the EU. At the beginning of March, the European Commission proposed to lift visa obligations for Georgian citizens. It of course, will uh, foster the business development of Georgian companies doing business and exports to the EU and vice versa. So yeah, it's all promising and aspiration of Georgians to be part of the Europe it has been there for, uh, I know, ages. So I think uh, we belong to Europe and we'll be there soon. Foreign investors have already arrived in Georgia. According to the World Investment Report, they invested $1.3 billion in 2014 alone.
All right, uh, you just saw that video from, uh, from Georgia, mm -hmm. and that's, that's from like 2015 anyway. But mm -hmm. it doesn't take away from the fact that Georgia has been progressively yes. doing so much yes. to, like you said, um, um, yeah. you know, remove every bottleneck uh, from its economy, making it uh, easier to do business there. Okay, uh, let's move away from Georgia now and talk about uh, what has to change. Yeah, so, well, I'll first touch on Georgia. Mm. When you... When you find that being an easy business climate becomes your competitive advantage, mm. then you take it very seriously. So I think in the past, we've had high oil prices. We just really didn't even care because at 160 whatever, mm. we were still the highest grossing FDI country on the continent. So we went into complacency. It mm. seemed as if the rankings just didn't matter. Right. But we didn't consider the opportunity cost. Mm. If our environment was like Georgia, how much more FDI, how m many more jobs. Right. So it's not necessarily how much you have, it's how much you could have and mm. what that can do for you, your mm. infrastructure, your education, your, you know, mm. what you need to really develop. Mm. So that's just one thing. Mm. Um, moving into like across the country, because you know World Bank only considers really capital cities. Yeah. But because Nigeria is over 100 million, we're measured on, on Lagos and Kano. That's, you know, you take the commercial mm -hmm. capital. Capitals, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we're also ranked subnationally because yes. we're such an interesting country mm -hmm. to the world. We've had at least three times we've been ranked, our states have been ranked. Mm -hmm. So from the middle of the year, quarter three, we're going to be going around geographical areas first and Abuja mm -hmm. and then visiting states. We already have states that are very interested in ease of doing business because of the IGR. Mm -hmm. You have Kaduna totally for reforms. Mm -hmm. You have Anambra, you have Ogun, you have, you know, Pretty much a lot of governors are interested in this because they know what it can deliver for their people. Mm. So I just wanted to make that point that it's not so much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, talking about, let's really talk about the laws that have to change okay. or maybe the ones that have to be new yeah. laws. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this National Collateral Registry Bill and mm. the Credit Bureau Services Bill. What yeah. would these bills achieve? Those two bills will facilitate access to credit. We've been working with the National Assembly very closely. The National Assembly has been working on ease of doing business for over a year now. Mm. They had a round table. They've identified a number of uh, laws and bills mm. need to be amended or passed that will facilitate the business climate. They've narrowed down to 11 priority ones that they want to pass this year, I believe. But we've worked with them. We've, we've asked them to partner with us to pass two specific bills that will make sure that SMEs can access more credit mm -hmm. and those two bills the collateral registry bill mm -hmm. and the credit bureaus bill will ensure that smes can access more credit from mm -hmm. banks okay mm -hmm. all right uh in 20 seconds <laughs> your last words before we go uh join us on the journey give us your feedback be hopeful uh be positive just watch us tell us what your priorities are we're here to listen we're here for smes in Nigeria, they're the engine of the economy. We've had feedback about NAFDAQ, about SON, we're, we're coming. It's not that we're not, but we have to be systematic. Mm. So we're on this journey together, and the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Dr. Juma <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> for thank coming on the program. Me. We appreciate <laughs> it. We look forward to having you Definitely. discuss your progress. Anytime. All yeah. right. Thank you. I've been speaking with uh, Dr. Juma Udwale. She is the uh, coordinator of the uh, Presidential Enabling uh, Business Environment Council. And I'm afraid that's all we can take for now. And uh, we end the program on this note. You can get in touch with us on, the, on our Twitter handle and on the email addresses on your screens. From me, Shego Jumu, and the rest of the team, goodbye. See you again next week.